Hi there, welcome. My name is Jason, and today I'm here to share a plant with you called Tillandsia xerographica. This is also referred to as the queen of the air plants, and it is no wonder why. It is absolutely gorgeous. These silvery strapping leaves, uh, they curl and twist, and this just looks like a shooting, a shooting star. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. It's a star. It's a focal point wherever you place it. This plant originates from parts of Mexico, Guatemala, and El Salvador, and it comes from desert regions in those areas. That makes this plant a drought-tolerant plant. Uh, this is a xeric plant, um, and so you want to keep that in mind when it comes to caring for this plant. As far as choosing a location, make sure that this plant gets bright and direct light and plenty of airflow. And you want plenty of both of those, the light and the airflow. Uh, you just don't want direct sunlight on this. You can have some morning sun, but you don't want it out in full sun like during the day. Uh, if you do have it outside, you want it in the covered area and just make sure not to leave it out there in the winter because you don't want your plant to freeze. Um, as far as watering goes, you want to water this plant about four times a week. Uh, it is very forgiving if you don't water it four times, but you want to water it around four times. You can do it a little bit more if you're misting. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to get some water. Um, purified water is, is great. You want to mist the leaves until this plant is fully saturated. Um, if you don't mist it, you can run it under water under the sink. And just when you do that, make sure the plant's upside down. Uh, you really don't want water getting trapped in the center in between the leaf blades because you don't want the plant to rot. Um, so you want to water it, letting the water run um, over the plant while it's upside down if you have, you're watering it at the sink. Um, either way, whether you've chosen to water it uh, by spraying it or watering it at the sink, uh, you want to place it on a towel um, and you want to let it dry for one to five hours. You can let it dry longer than that if you want. If this was in a bowl of rocks, you could just set it on top of the rocks and let it drain there. Um, once it's done drying, um, you can just turn it back up and it's ready for display again. Uh, the reason you want to water this plant in the morning is because where it comes from, it experiences cool evenings and dew accumulates all over these leaves in the morning. So we're trying to mimic what it experiences in its natural habitat and that will help your plant thrive. Um, as far as uh, fertilizing goes, you want to fertilize your plant once a month, spring through fall, with the Tillandsia fertilizer. And you want to do that because Tillandsia fertilizers have been formulated specifically for Tillandsia, for epiphytes. This plant is an epiphyte. In other words, um, when, it, when it grows roots, it uses those roots to mount itself to trees up in the air. Uh, not as a non-parasitic plant, it just uses the roots to mount itself there. And, um, and it absorbs nutrients actually through the trichomes and the leaves. And the trichomes are these fuzzy scales that cover these leaves. And uh, that's what gives this plant its silvery sheen. Uh, that's, what it, that's what this plant uses to absorb water and nutrients. Um, also, being that this plant is covered in its silvery sheen of trichomes, it can use that um, appearance to reflect sunlight off in desert conditions the way that this plant does. Um, so make sure that you get a Tillandsia fertilizer and only use that kind of fertilizer on Tillandsia because um, they, they're different in the sense that they drink through their leaves and you need a fertilizer formulated for that. Uh, as far as toxicity goes, Tillandsia are non-toxic plants. So pretty awesome feature. Uh, as far as displaying, um, you can display them in wooden bowls, ceramic bowls, glass bowls. You can mount them on wood. Um, there's so many decorative ways to display your Tillandsia, which is one of the awesome things about that. Um, I just have this in a wooden bowl here, and what's really neat about that is if, say, I have guests coming over and I'm entertaining and I'm doing a tablescape or just decorating the house, you know, you can take it out and you can, especially if you have other Tillandsia as well, you can group them together and you can place them around decoratively um, to spruce up any table setting. Uh, they're pretty awesome plants. Um, if there's any questions that you have about Tillandsia xerographica, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And once again, thanks for hanging out. My name's Jason.